into the CHGO Blackhawks pregame show sponsored by Coors Light. We love our friends at Coors Light. I'm Jay Zawoski with Craig Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. The Hawks and Sharks drop the puck in about 25 minutes. We've got Luke Richardson. We've got the Lions for tonight. We've got Who's Your Hawk. We've got Light the Lamp. We've got all kinds of stuff. We got 30 minutes in a 25-minute bag, so we're going to get right to it. Before we do, do us a favor and smash that like button on the YouTube page and make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel as well. And here we're going to ask you for a special thing on this late Saturday night. Copy that YouTube link, tweet it out, share it on Facebook, and tell your friends to join us for the pregame show today. That'd be really helpful. We'll do the same thing in postgame. That would be fun. Yes. Fellas, how are we doing? Good evening. Good. I'm tired. It's, it's comfy. Almost, it's almost my bedtime, and we haven't even started the game yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it's the Sharks. So there's a chance that the Blackhawks at least win this game, and it's a more entertaining postgame. I guaranteed victory we'll last start time. With one goal. I was going to say we said that. Today. Said that last last game too. Yeah, they're going to lose this one. There, I'm gonna I'm gonna reverse uh, mojo it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, you know I'm if they one goal, if they if they lose this one, then hey, that's a tank win, right? There you go. That's see, yeah. always looking on the bright side, yeah. Mario. The brightest of sides. That's you, Mister Brightside. Yes. The song I hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Overrated. That was actually um, written about me. Yeah. Was it? That yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't we hear from uh, Luke Richardson right now, and then we'll get to the uh, the lines in this game. And I think there's going to be some people very happy with the lines in this one. Well, at least happier than usual. Here's Luke. Where is lineup tonight? Um, Ant Whistle will be back in. Uh, we're we're going to go back to obviously 12 and, and 6, and Tenorti will be out, and Peter's starting in there. Have you been, I guess, just trying to figure out who's kind of meshing with Bedard and Kershaw at this point again? And just... Yeah, and I just kind of going with some familiarity from the last few games that they had success uh, against certain teams. And I thought, you know, um, Tyler and Kershev and Connor really kind of drove the offense uh, for us last time against San Jose. So we'll kind of look for that tonight again. Uh, we've been talking about Kevin's strength and everything, and I asked Seth this too, but do you remember how many seasons or how long it took you when you came into the league until you got to the like level of strength that you wanted to be or that that you found was most effective uh i'm still trying to get there but uh <laughs> it's you know what he he's doing a great job uh, he's a different style of defenseman than i ever was like uh, he's a great skater uh offensive guy with a good shot that we're trying to promote to use more um but you know even last game i got a few clips for tonight where uh in the d zone wasn't our greatest game last game but there was a couple good clips for him on uh cutbacks where he pinned the guy and um you know he was really solid so you know, we got to build from showing him little clips from there. But you know what? I think uh, his body's still growing. You know, he's only 19, and uh, you know, I think your body really fills out uh, when you're about 20, 21, 22. Um, so that's that's you know, being a couple of years. And but as you're working hard at the same time, and your body fills out, it it comes quick. So uh, you know, over the next few years, he's just going to feel more comfortable uh, in the physicality department. What's been the feedback for Reichel after the first three games? Um, you know, I thought the first game was great, and then a little bit of a drop off. But you know, it's LA, right? And uh, I thought last game in the third period, he was one of our better guys moving his feet. Uh, so that's what we need. We need him and Double uh, A moving their feet and creating offensive uh, chances with the speed. And uh, if anything, it pushes them back. And that's what we got to uh, get him consistently doing. And uh, doing that is just being responsible in the D zone. That means you're not there very long. And that's where they're better. They're better with the puck uh, on the offense. So let's just get them to that. Did you find them playing off each other yet? Or uh, a little bit, yeah. I thought that made a real nice play in the third period and it just bounced. I think it came through a, a, a bit of a screen and it surprised Reichel right in front of the crease. Uh, but uh, I think they look for each other well and uh, their speed matches each other so they can, uh, um, you know, kind of make plays uh, quickly. And I, I, I like the look of it. It's just they got to get it done. So uh, hopefully uh, they can continue what they uh, started in the third period the other night. Anything mm-hmm. new on Blackwell? Uh, no, I just talked to him. Actually, he said he's feeling a little bit better, but uh, he's pretty tight in the whole upper body area. So we're just gonna, uh, you know, probably evaluate him a little more when we get home. And uh, but uh, today he did say uh, it was a little bit better, uh, but I don't know where that still leaves him. We've had a lot of con- a lot of attention on Connor, of course, but uh, Korchinski also has played at a really high level for a young guy. As somebody that started his career at a pretty young age in the NHL. Just can you reflect on how much they've improved and where have they improved the most? Yeah, you know, I think uh, his confidence level of, uh, you know, having good, better gaps on the line rushes against, not backing in. And uh, I think that's 
one time through the league, right? He's starting to know the league. He's starting to know the players he's playing against and trusting his own skating ability, which is excellent. Uh, you know, and he's, uh, he's still growing. We just talked about him getting stronger. Uh, that's just going to continue to get better ever over the next few years. But uh, we're already seeing improvements on the defensive side of the puck, which is going to allow him to use that skating ability on the offense. One thing that we noticed with, uh, with Connor is that he makes use of every minute. Yeah, no, for sure. He, he loves to be out there. He loves to work on things. He loves to uh, get repetition on, on shooting angles and shooting areas. So he's kind of ready for that opportunity when it happens. Um, so, and, and, he's, and he just does it from not just the normal areas that you're going to get it from. He does it from kind of awkward areas. And I think he throws goalies off by uh, getting shots off from there. Does, does you know, NHL can be a, a long grind for a young player. Uh, as you sort of run to the end of the season here, is there some thought of sort of managing his time a little more and maybe backing him off a bit? No, because he loves it. I think uh, he's uh, looking for as much ice time as he can get. Uh, you know, we obviously uh, try and utilize him in the, the areas where he can succeed on some ozone face-offs, uh, maybe double him up uh, his ice time a little bit if uh, the, tire, the other line's tire, even if it's a top line in the other team. Uh, try and get him to expose them there if he can we can win that face off and uh, he's doing a great job of uh, you know I mean uh, you know he, he's another guy that's he's starting to learn the other side of the puck and realize that in the D zone if he's in the right positions the puck comes to him and then he's going to have it more so that's uh, maturity starting to show there already. Is he getting the shots through more often do you find that he's finding how to get a little it bit but I, I'd like him to like rip a couple like slap shots like he scored on his last goal uh, not just wristing them in looking for tips I think you know I mean he's got to take charge on some of those. There he is Luke Richardson uh, from the Kung Fu movie with the delayed audio it's always entertaining. <laughs> You get the subtitles on there. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. The last couple of times there's been like a glitch and then the audio gets all thrown off. So whatever, not our fault. Thanks to the it's, Blackhawks for use of the video. It's a long way for the video to travel from California to to Chicago. So. Yeah, they had to, they had to uh, mail the VHS tape, uh, you know, carrier pigeon. Yeah, probably uh, some, some bumps in the mill. Yeah. So, I, could, uh, uh, I could feel... Uh, the frustration on Scott Power's face trying to ask the question and getting cut off by out-of-town reporters. I could just <laughs> feel his body temperature rising every time he got cut off. <laughs> That's I'm a little surprised there hasn't been more of that this year with Bedard and you know morning skate reporters wanting to be there and talk to Luke about it. And I don't know. It's, it's happened less frequently than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's happened a lot with the Canadian teams being around because I think you get most of those teams have their own national Canadian media like reporter for either TSN or Sportsnet. But yeah, right. not a not a ton with uh with with any other teams, unless it's a national broadcast. All right, let's take a look at the lines for tonight's game. You heard uh Jared Tenorti is out, but here's what Luke has lined up for this evening. You've got your top line left to right, Tyler Johnson on the left wing with Connor Bedard and Philip Kurashev. Nick Foligno, Jason Dickinson, and Joey Anderson. Whoa, whoa. Thank you. Uh, Lucas Reichel, Andreas Athanasiu, and Taylor Radish on the third line. Landon Slager, Mackenzie Antwistle, and Ryan Donato on the fourth. Your D pairs are Vlasic Jones, Korchinski, Korchins and Magna, and Kaiser, and Zaitsev with Mrazek in goal. And fellas, Vlasic and Jones have been really good together, um, obviously. They're your two best defensemen. But after we take this break here, why don't we come back and talk about should they consider maybe putting – Vlasic with Magna and Korchinski with Jones. Does that make sense? Let's talk about that mm. in a little bit. But first, a break. <laughs> <laughs> a break. Is it my break? My first? Yes. Uh, yep. Yes. Awesome. Well, hey, I'm here to tell you about Circa Sportsbook. They are the best sportsbook around. Don't believe me? Well, hey, let to try and argue with this. They have the best tight money line splits and low hold models out there. Circus Sports will always strive to have a game at a, for example, minus 110 split on their menu, unlike other sports books, which may use a minus 115 or even a minus 120 split on that same game. Circus Sports keeps as little money as possible on large market bets, especially compared to those other books. And they have very high app limits, so they do not limit players based on their winnings. Every player has the same limits, unlike other books 
who limit winning players. Circa wants you to try and take as much money from them as possible, and they encourage bettors to download and explore all sports betting apps available to compare the lines from all those games and see that Circa Sportsbook is going to give you the best lines every single time. And they have awesome customer service because there are real people behind the Circa Sports brand who resolve issues in a timely fashion, unlike those other books who use chatbots and chatbots suck all aspects of the app are being run by the same team that runs the main circa sports book at circa resort and casino in las vegas so download the circa sports illinois app at circa sports.com slash illinois dash app and set up today also be on the lookout for circa events watch parties and tailgates uh if you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling call 1-800-GAMBLER that's 1-800-426-2537 or text GAMB G-A-M-B to 833-234 or visit areyoureallywinning.com you know what's even worse than those sucky ass chatbots it's ticket stress mm. oh ticket yes. stress it is the worst you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you or far away from you. You don't have to stay within your own city limits to go see events. Go wherever the hell you want. And with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. <clears throat> if you head on over to their website or their app, <clears throat> you realize there's just five home games left for the Chicago Blackhawks this season. And you can get into four of those five games for under $30. That is a tremendous deal. And the price you see is the price you're going to pay. You're not going to get a ton of surprise hidden fees when you go to check out. And if you're a first-time buyer, you're going to save a ton of money with your first purchase. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create your account and then use the promo code CHGO for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code CHGO for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. Yes, do that. Game time is wonderful, as is Circa. Um, so Vlasic and Jones, Korchinski and Megna. My thought here is, and Luke's talked about this a lot too, and Q used to do it all the time where the philosophy is spread the wealth a little bit. Don't overload one line to, to, you know, to the detriment of another. And, you know, maybe Jones is a little too wander happy to put with Korchinski. Vlasic is kind of a nice security blanket there, but Magno is just not much of anything. And he's not helping Korchinski at all. I don't know. Just a thought. I mean, they they have played Jones and Korchinski together before, um, not too frequently, like as like a set lineup thing, but they have done it in game, putting those guys together. Um, I think trying to do it a little bit more as maybe a an offensive jump. Um, but yeah, I mean, I the thing is, like, I I try not to uh, worry too much about Korchinski this season when he's been player, played paired with uh, Jacob Magna because it's supposed to be Connor Murphy. Um, and I know yeah. that it's not, and you can't, you know, you can't disregard that, but I, I think what we've seen from Korchinski this season, since Murphy has been down, um, you know, it, it's, it's been up and down. There's been, you know, bumps in the road. There's, it hasn't been the, the rookie season, that uh you know a guy like Connor Bedard is having um but it hasn't been atrocious like he hasn't looked out of place he hasn't looked you know like he's sinking in the NHL like he's definitely had some learning moments but he's also had some bright spots and and he's he's had those bright spots still too with Jacob Megna I think the fact that Vlasic and Jones has worked so well um I th I think when you have a, a top pair that's working like that, you really don't want to break them up and you don't really need to break them up right now. Yeah, I'd leave it. I mean, it's so late in the season at this point, you know, I, I don't think Connor Murphy's coming back. Um, it was, that was uh, not an ideal situation. 
<clears throat> if he was here, you would have him with Korchinski the whole time. Um, but I mean, I, I mean, you mentioned the Quinville spread the wealth kind of um, <clears throat> thought process, and and yeah, I mean, I think that works a little better with your forward lines, but with your defensive pairs, when when you're so bad defensively as a team on most nights, I think it it helps to have that one pairing you know is not going to let you down and then you just hold on for dear life when everybody else is on the line on the ice uh not that you know jones and korchinski would be bad would vlasic and megna really be that big of an upgrade maybe but if you flip-flop those two pairs you're worse than you are right now yeah i mean it's it's, it's probably true i just i feel like We've seen a little bit recently where Korchinski has been kind of struggling, swimming a little bit. Uh, and you wonder if maybe just putting him with someone a little more steady than Megna, which is pretty much everybody, um, would be beneficial to him. But I think your point's correct where that's supposed to be counter Murphy. Stylistically, I guess Megna is the closest you have to him. So you want to put, you know, offensive freewheeling with stay at home defense. You're kind of doing the same thing with Jones and Vlasic. But yeah, I mean, this is the stuff we talk about when we have off-season conversations about Connor Murphy, and he's not a guy who he's never going to be get the spotlight. He's never going to have huge stats. He's never going to be a Norris consideration. But damn, there is there is value in a guy just being steady and just being out there and knowing where to be. And he's not going to win every matchup. He's going to get burned sometimes. He's going to be slow on a play, whatever. But just to have a guy that nine times out of ten is going to do the right thing and get the puck out of trouble. There's huge value in that, especially on a young team. So I think in his absence, we've really seen what the Hawks have missed in, in Connor Murphy. So and Murphy struggled a lot early in the season and and was has been heavily criticized, rightfully sh- uh, so, on this yeah. show. But then when you realize that, like, mm, even a struggling Connor Murphy is light years better than Jacob Magna it's at a, his best. <laughs> NHL player versus yeah, not. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's a big. It's, it's a big uh, jump. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the, one of the, I think one of the, uh, the things that, uh, Murphy could actually kind of be an example for Korchinski in is Connor Murphy is like such a nice guy. He's a great guy to talk to, like really great at the community, a really nice guy. He is not afraid to be physical, be mean, get in a fight, throw hands when he's on the ice. And that's something that we, we heard from, from Richardson, uh, earlier in this in this road trip about Korchinski is that he's a good kid he's a really nice kid he needs to get mean around the ice um and so you know we've seen him working with that but I think that's something that like in those times you'd love to have a guy like Connor Murphy playing right next to him because he's he's the he's the he's that kind of player you know like he is he is a really really nice guy a lot of people like him um but he will he's not shy of about being physical I think some of the snarl will come with Korchinski's game as he gets more confident and gets more experience under his belt too. It's tough to be a guy who's still learning to play at the NHL level while also having the confidence to be like, get the F out of my crease. I'm going to cross check you in the back. Like uh, that confidence has a lot to do with that. And even we saw early this year, like for the first, you know, I I would would actually kind of say before Bedard got hurt or maybe a little bit slightly before that, even he was a little bit shy about like over asserting himself or celebrating too hard or anything like that. But then when he got back and was started to experience that success, he's like, all right, I can do this. I can play here. So now you're going to hear from me every now and again, or I'm going to stare you down or I'm going to finish a check hard on you. And it's as the confidence grows, the swag grows. And I think that's part of what leads to that physicality. If you're not a guy whose job it is to be physical, right? Like Matt Rempe is going to get called up and be like, you go hit people, go punch people. Okay. That's my job. So I'll do it. Korchinski's job is to a survive and not hurt the team and be at offense. And I think the, the tough, the toughness part of his game will come as he believes in himself a little bit more. I hope. Yeah. But he's shown the like, willingness that that practice battle film was, that was fun. Yeah. Encouraging. And that was real. Yeah, I, so. I think it's there. It's there. It's just got to get un, unleashed a little bit and being a 19 year old in the NHL can't be easy. <clears throat> you know, you're, you're worried about, not making mistakes you're worried about you know keeping the veterans on your team happy and now i think this off season he'll work on getting bigger uh and stronger and that nastiness will come with time i mean some of the 
nicest guys I've ever met uh, in hockey locker rooms have, could be absolute jag offs on the ice. So, yeah. um, you know, it's 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 hard for some people, but you know, it, it's very difficult to play the game of hockey, especially at this level, and not at some point just lose it and want to punch somebody in the face it's, it's, it's a very game, difficult yeah it's a game play with sticks True. and knives i mean you know you're gonna get pissed off eventually right. all right yeah. now it is time to light the lamp presented by coors light coors light delivered straight to your door with instacart by going to coorslight.com slash chgo hockey again coorslight.com slash chgo hockey order some coors light in time for this late night game celebrate responsibly for his brewing company, Golden, Colorado. Last game out, Philip Kurashev had a goal and an assist, so we're going to pick him to light the lamp tonight for the Blackhawks, and that leads beautifully into who's your Hawk and Mario, who had the first pick today. I did, uh, but I lost last game while picking Connor Bedard, so unfortunately I do not have the uh, first pick advantage of picking Connor Bedard in this game, but I went with Philip Kurashev. Because if it's not Bedard, it might as well be Philip <laughs> Kurashev. <laughs> um, That's true. And yeah, I, I like we've 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 been very happy with his uh, with his season this year, the way his development has uh, has progressed, and it would be wonderful if he had uh, another two point night tonight. That would be great. Mario leads with twenty seven points. I had the second pick because I could, I did. I took counter Bedard looking for my 24th pick of the year. Uh, when he's available and you're able to take him, you take him. Don't overthink it. It's not rocket surgery. Just take the kid. And Greg, who do you, who do you have looking for your 21st win of the year? I am going with Kevin Korchinski. I'm predicting oh. that I'm predicting the <laughs> Gordy Howe hat trick. My friend, he's going to get mean. He's going to score a goal. He's going to get an assist and he's going to beat the crap out of some San Jose shark. I think that is uh, definitely what's going to happen. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think that is that certain and an amazing. easy bet. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Well, the Hawks and Sharks <laughs> are going to drop the puck here in a few minutes. Reminder, we're going to be with you post game show tonight. Late night. I know it's late. Stay up with us. Be there for us. Even if you're just like lingering and you fall asleep with us on, that's fine. Just hit the hit the like button and then fall asleep with us on in the background. That would be fine. We would appreciate that. Then right. wake up, turn on your podcast app and then listen to it there beautiful very easy beautiful yes we would appreciate that all right hawks and sharks about to get underway we're going to wrap things up thanks to greg braggs for running the pregame and staying up with us tonight as well we'll talk to you on the other side of black hawks and sharks on the chgo black hawks podcast we all silly like the mayor 